Hello and welcome to another episode of Excel Learning Series with Sayed. In this episode, we will take a look at what a pivot table is and how we can build a new pivot table using a data set in Excel. Here are some of the topics that we will be focusing on during this episode. To follow along with me, make sure you have a copy of this workbook downloaded using the link in the video description. In this workbook, we have a single worksheet called data set. Now we have some data on our sheet. It's a very large data. When do you think you really need a pivot table? For example, uh, if I am looking at this data, it looks like an expense sheet to me. So if I want to say, find out how much money has been spent by this person, Anna, on fruits in the month of January, I can say that very quickly. All I have to do is select this data set, go to data tab and click on filters. Then click on member drop down, select Anna from the list. Now I have to select the second filter that is January and there I can see all the expenses done by Anna during the month of January. But now I want to see fruits. So if I go here, then I select fruits and click OK. I can see Anna spent these amounts during the month of January on fruits. So this was a, a typical way of looking at it without a pivot table. It was too time expensive to make it more efficient. We can start using pivot tables. This is just a simple one for pivot table. It's like a snap of a finger and done. So how do we go about it? Let me first clear the filters and get rid of the filter thing. Before getting into action, let me help you understand what is a pivot table. Pivot table is one of the efficient ways to handle your data, analyze it, summarize it in one of the efficient ways in just few clicks. Let's take a look. Now, while I have my selection inside the data, I go to insert tab on the top, select pivot table. But before I do that, what do I want from this data is very important. And whether my data is in proper format or not. For example, if I have a column that says dates, everything in that column should be in date format. When I have a name or a type that it belongs to a string category or a text format, make sure that everything in that column is text. And similarly, when you're looking at the numbers, for example, I see spent here, it looks like an amount to me. So I will change that to amount. So this is the amount that has been spent on that particular item. So this should be a number. So make sure that your data is lined up properly. And now, before we move to a pivot table creation, we really need to think about what do I need from this table. Say, for example, I want to see the data summarized by the type of expense by the person. For example, I want to see who spent how much for each category in different months. So for that kind of data, I might have to apply too many filters. But at this point of time, pivot tables will come in very handy. Placing my selection somewhere in between this data, I will go into insert tab and click on pivot table to start a new pivot table. When I do that, I get a dialogue that says create pivot table. The data where my selection was around it, whatever the data was, is selected by Excel by default. So here, all the cells from A1 to D1000 are selected. And it now says, would you like to create a pivot table in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet? I would like to create it in a new worksheet. So I will just let that option be and click on OK. Now here in the new worksheet, I have my pivot table canvas on the left side and my pivot table controls that is pivot table fields and the drop areas for those fields are on the right side. Every single column that I have on my data set is referred to as pivot table field. For example, we have four columns, date, member, type and amount. Those columns are referred to as fields inside my pivot table control on the right side. Below that section, you can see there are four areas. These are vital areas of your pivot table. This will help you to build your pivot table, transform data, analyze, summarize your data in few clicks. Let me show you how. First thing what I want to do is I want to see how much money was spent by every family member by categories. So for that, I will select type. That is where my categories are. I will drag that type into rows. If I drag it into the rows, I can see all those categories listed. These are the unique 
entries of those categories if it is been repeated 100 times doesn't matter only the single instance of that category will be called here now i would drag the member from the top into the bottom in rows so you can see i have the members grouped inside the category i don't want it in that fashion so instead of dropping it inside the rows i will drag it away from the rows and drop it inside columns so now i have my rows which is carrying the categories that is the type of expense and in the columns i have the members of the family now where is the amount i really need that amount I want to see how much did they spend. For example, how much did Anna spent on bakery? How much did Jacob spent on books? So on and so forth. For that, I will drag the amount field into the values field area and drop it there. You see that magic? Drag, drop, done. That easy. It's it's really easy. You just need to focus on what you want from your data. Imagine I want to see this data by months. I have a date field. If I just drag the date field into filters, it will give me a filter on the top from where I can select single single date or select this option which says select multiple items and select different dates from the selection or i can just do away with this date first i'll drag it out from that filters area as soon as i have that cross mark on it i'll drop it now it is gone i will drag the date field one more time and this time i will release that date field in the rows section above the type field you see that little green line that is an indicator that it is going to be dropped on the top of that type field i will drop it there now there is another magic excel is sensing that it is a type of date field and hence based on my data structure it is going to give me additional fields that is for date it says okay you might also need a month so it gave me the month field it created that field for me i will just get rid of this date because i don't need single day by day field so i need month so for that i will just drag this date out of that section that is on the row field area as soon as i have the cross mark on it i will drop it here there we go now we have nicely aligned data by month for every family member showing how much did they spend in each category this is going little long so i don't want it in that fashion for that what i would do is i will just do away with the months field and now what i will do is i will call in a slicer what is a slicer you will see that in a bit i will select some cell inside this pivot table on the top i have pivot table tools from there i click on analyze tab then select insert slicer slicer will help me to quickly apply filters on this data set using any of the fields that i have on my pivot table so for now i will say i need a slicer for months i click okay now i have this slicer block i can just move it anywhere anywhere on my sheet expand it you can just drag it from any corner and expand it now let me leave it here i have all these months so for example if i want to see the expenses done during the month of june by these family members i will click june and there we go only the expenses of june are now being shown if i want to see april i'll just click on that so here i can select one month at a time what if i want to select more than a month for that i will click on this little button that says multi select or i can press alt plus s on my keyboard as shown in the brackets of that tooltip i click that now i can select multiple months so now it is showing me the expenses done during the month of may and july i can now get rid of the filters by clicking on this little funnel with the cross mark on it there we go now what if i want to add more into my slicers i can simply go into pivot table select any random cell in there then click on analyze tab under the pivot table tools please make sure that you select some cell inside your pivot table in order to see this pivot table tools tab otherwise it will not appear for example if i just get out of there it's gone so i have to be in the pivot table go to pivot table tools tab now select insert slicer now i would want to select member and click okay now i can say 
how much did anna spent how much did jacob spent you can play around with this data as you like you can just keep switching between views for example if i just want to change the view let me drag this around let me clear the filters go into pivot tables now i want to show for example instead of members i want to show categories on the top in the columns and instead of the type of expense on the left i want to show members there so i will just drag this member down place it up or down the category now drag this category that is type of expense out of that rows section and drop it in the column there we go so it is now switched we transpose the data it was easy now if i want to draw a timeline let's see how we can do it for example i select this one this table looks a little wider to me so i will just go back to this old view i will drag the type from column into rows and member from rows to columns now placing my mouse somewhere in between i will go into analyze tab and then click on insert timeline there we go in the timeline if you have a date type field only then you will be able to use timelines since i have one i can select date and click okay there we go i have this nice looking timeline i can place it anywhere on my sheet expand it and there we go i can say how much in feb how much in may but i cannot select random months i can select a sequence of month say from jan to feb to march to april but i cannot say how much was spent during feb and october in timeline because that's that's something not available at this point of time in timeline so i can just get rid of filter applied by clicking on that little funnel this is how you use your pivot tables it was very simple imagine different types of scenarios and try to manipulate your data as much as you can practice with it see how you can deal with it for example this is currently showing grand total i don't want to see the grand total i will right click here and go to pivot table options totals and filters grand total for rows i don't want to see the grand total for rows uncheck that click okay there we go so when i say for rows it's not going to get rid of this one because these are the grand totals of the columns the grand total will go away from this point because this is the grand total of rows so let me bring it back right click pivot table options totals and filters show grand totals and now click okay there we go now imagine that you suddenly decided to add some more data into this data set let me go to the end of this data set and add one more row here say 31st december 2020 and i heard that jacob spent on books 1000 okay i have it in place now i go to sheet tab that is the pivot table tab let me rename the sheet one to pivot table or you can call it summary whichever is comfortable with you now i go inside the pivot table i right click and click on refresh or i can go to data tab on the top and click on refresh or while inside the pivot table i can go to pivot table tools analyze and refresh these are the three ways of refreshing your data inside a pivot table so now i want to see whether the amount of jacob for books will increase or not when i refresh this so i refresh i see no change at all why because our pivot table is referring to a limited data set for example if i just go into the analyze tab and click on change data source on the top it will show me what is the range that is being referred to to generate that pivot table so we have data set cell a1 to d1000 and the new row that we just added is on row 1001 so how do we fix this i can simply go ahead and say 1001 and click okay it will be added but every time i add a data i have to do that i don't want to do that so before getting started with your pivot table there is a small step that you really need to focus on you need to change your data set into a table you might be wondering what kind of table am i talking about the data is already in a table format excel has a format as table option that will name this range and that name will be used by pivot table to generate pivot for example i select 
any cell, just randomly select any cell inside that data, then go to home tab under that one, click on format as table, select any option of your choice. For, for example, I'll just select this one and I will say my table has headers and then click on OK. There we go. Now this table is created. I have some filters on the top by default applied. Now I will need to change the data source of my pivot to address the problem that I have. That is to update it dynamically. I'll go to pivot table and now while having any cell selected inside that pivot table, I go to analyze tab under the pivot table tools, then select change data source. Now I will just click on this one, get rid of source and select the new range of cells. There we go. You see that one? It's not saying table one. It's not showing me the cell references. So I just click on OK, go back to data set, add another value. For example, 31st December 2020, say uh, Anna spent on hotel say 1000. Now I go back into pivot table and here I say in hotel and uh, it shows 2400. It should say 3400 if I refresh this. Right click, refresh. There we go. Every time a new value is added to your data set, it will be automatically updated into your pivot table. All you have to do is refresh. Now imagine you send this book to somebody and you forgot to refresh. You want pivot to be updated each time your workbook is closed and restarted. For that, you just right click inside your pivot table, go to pivot table options and then go to data tab and select this option which says refresh data when opening the file and click OK. Now. When I add data to my data set and save the file and do not refresh, it will get updated. For example, let me show you. I add 31st December 2020 and I say father spent on books, say 1000. I go back to pivot table. I see on books father amount is 2626. I just save it. I am not refreshing it. I will close the file and I open it back again. You see that 3626, the pivot table is now updated. So this is how we update the pivot table automatically without having us to go into refresh again and again each time the data is added. There is a quick way of formatting your pivot table. Just be inside your pivot table, go to design tab under the pivot table tools and select any design of your choice to quickly apply that design on your pivot table and make it look a lot nicer than uh, what it is by default. For example, I, I kind of love the blue shades. So I'll just select this one. The borders are not so visible. So I will just go in say band columns. There we go. Band rows. There we go. So this is a quick way of formatting your pivot tables. You can explore more as you explore with the course. Make sure you practice as much as you can to retain this learning. In case you have doubt, do not hesitate to ask in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to help you. I thank you for investing your time in this episode and would love to see you in the next episode. So stay tuned. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to enable notifications for regular updates. We will catch up soon in the next video. Stay happy, stay lovely.